From Benjamin Tucci, should the Panthers pursue Baker Mayfield? That or Jimmy Garoppolo? Like, I, look, the Panthers allegedly don't want Baker, and Baker doesn't want Carolina, which, okay. Beggars also can't be choose either side. QB class is not great this year. Maybe Carolina goes QB round one. They pass on Baker. See if it works out for him. What up, Dom? Townie, Trayvon Walker, Tariq Woolen, Tyler Smith, and to keep Petit Friere, Nick Petit Friere, with Seattle's first three picks. Also, could Denzel Ward be traded? I would be shocked if Cleveland ended up trading Denzel Ward. I think he's a hell of a corner. In terms of those first three picks, so what, you got nine, 40, and 41? I think it's possible. I know a lot of people like Walker uh, as a top 10 pick. Personally, I don't think he was that great of a player to go top 10. Definitely top 20. Tariq Wollin is one of the best corners out there. I love him a lot, so I think that pick makes sense. Tyler Smith, though, still a little bit early for me. But if you're desperate for a, a Dwayne Brown replacement, Tyler Smith from Tulsa did have a lot of good numbers in. Probably one of the better sleeper prospects at offensive tackle. All right, so out of the four teams that y'all see on screen right now, who ends up this 2022 season with the most wins? If you think it's the Tennessee Titans, I want you to go ahead and type T-E-N. Baltimore Ravens, B-A-L. Seattle Seahawks, S-E-A. The Pittsburgh Steelers type P-I-T. The reason why I'm going to go with the Tennessee Titans is because they're in the weakest division. Though the team that I see being the worst on screen is Seattle. Baltimore has the upside with Lamar Jackson. Pittsburgh has the defense, but they're in a much tougher division. So I'm personally going to go ahead and say T-E-N. From Tulux Chill Videos, who is the best receiver outside of round one? Um, I don't think George Pickens goes round one, but that's a really good football player. And it's kind of like receiver Derek Stingley where had the, the career been flipped, he'd be in that top, I think, 15, top 20 conversation. Uh, I love his attitude, by the way. He's such a, such a bully out there, in a good way, I mean. Um, so I, I, I like Pickens a lot there. Um, I'm a big Alec Pierce fan, who I know will be there in round two and maybe round three. I think those are two names. I think guys like a Christian Watson, a Jahan Dotson, Sky Moore are maybe better guys, but I think they have a better chance of going round one than George Pickens does. From Will Clark, Lamar Jackson trades and he won't sign an extension. Um, I would be surprised again here. Um, Lamar seems like he wants to wait, which, okay, weird. The Ravens want to pay him. But this is also why you wait if you want to as a QB. Because the market has changed drastically this year. If you're Lamar... Aren't you asking for the Deshaun Watson deal? And you say, what is Deshaun Watson that I haven't done? The answer is literally nothing. He's had more playoff success. Like, and he doesn't have the off-the-field stuff. Watson's fully guaranteed deal is a problem for NFL teams. They don't like that. Because the other QBs are going to ask for that now, too. And that is a, that's an issue for him. Maybe he settles for the Josh Allen deal. But whenever Lamar gets paid, as long as he doesn't collapse as a player... Is going to be a lot. So with that in mind, what is the most that you would pay Lamar Jackson per year? Is it 40? Less than that? 43, 45 or more? Let me know right now in the comment section. Fishing life, Mike. What up, my dude? Who do you think will be, a, be the surprise player to fall out of the first round? Good question. Surprise player to fall out of the first round. This might be an unpopular opinion. I'm going to go with Drake London, the receiver from USC. He's really talented, but has already had some injury issues that I know some NFL scouts are a little bit weary about. So if I know some of these other uh, wide receivers are really talented and I could take them in the first round, I'll say Drake London, but that would be a big-time surprise. Andrew Temple, do you think that the way things are going right now when teams don't want to pay big players, they just get traded off? So it's not they don't have the money. The Packers wanted to pay Devontae Adams. The Chiefs could have paid Tyreek Hill. They could have paid Amari Cooper. It was that they didn't think the value was right. And in general, that is what teams should do. If you're not going to pay somebody and somebody else will, then trade them and get something back. So I think that is the way things are going. And frankly, it's the way they've gone before. Uh, teams are just a bit more aggressive in trading for those guys than what they might have been in the past. Now, if you want daily NFL videos and the 2022 NFL Draft Live, you're at the right spot. 
Hit that big red button and subscribe, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Alex Olay, why is Kayvon Thibodeau falling down boards? It's a good question. Um, I will not speak for myself because I like Thibodeau a lot. I want to make that clear. But the reports and buzz and whispers and claims out there are kind of as follows here. Uh, he's not a great bender. It's true. He doesn't have a great bend. Uh, he's not a great athlete. False. Not as big as we thought. Kind of true. Uh, but also, like, you should have known that because the numbers were out there for a while here. Like, from a team perspective. Uh, he's got an ego. Sure. But also, like, you know, he's a top 10 pick. Like, of course he has an ego. It's not a bad thing. Uh, he's got focus issues. He cares about, about his brand. And that's what annoys me the most. This, like, Thibodeau doesn't love football. We've heard that before with other top Oregon prospects. Justin Herbert doesn't love football. He's too smart. Real thing. Panay Sewell, immature with no specifications as to why. That narrative happens a lot with Oregon guys. And it's 0 for 2 with Sewell and, and, uh, and Herbert so far. And I don't get why that happens just for them. doesn't make any sense. And it's really weird to see the Thibodeau cares too much about his brand when Aiden Hutchinson has a show already with PFF. Like, that narrative disconnect doesn't make sense to me. It's really weird. I think Thibodeau should probably pick number two. If I were the Lions and I missed out on, on Hamilton, I'm not going to go safety in round one, which, okay, I get positional value, I would take Thibodeau. The Texans at three, the Jets at four, the Giants at five should all strongly consider Kayvon Thibodeau. The Giants at seven, Falcons eight, Seahawks nine. If he gets out of the top ten, Maybe then the NFL is, is right. Maybe then there is the real stuff. They're concerned about adjusting Gilbert all over again. For you Browns fans, you know that one. And maybe we're wrong. It's tough to know, but the NFL isn't always right on those things. And it's just the narrative is weird uh, for around Kayvon Thibodeau, especially with the Oregon stuff being similar in the past. And I like him a lot. Top five guy for me. I, I take him in a heartbeat. So what do you think? Who will draft Kayvon Thibodeau this year? Pin comment on today's video. If the ad break comes, you know the drill. Head down there. Let me know who you think will draft Kayvon Thibodeau in round one of this year's class. NFL Daily is now also on Rumble. Exclusive content, more videos, and of course, stuff we post here on YouTube is also available on Rumble. We try to dominate that platform. Rumble.com slash NFL Daily. DG Sports Talk, are y'all hiring? That is above my pay, my pay grade, my friend. But to answer your question on Pierre Strong, I just finished him up the other night, so let me read off from my scouting report here. Pierre Strong, 5'11 and change, 202, uh, zone rushing scheme, uh, sleeper. I, I wish he played FBS, I thought he, but he tested great with elite production at South Dakota State. Made some guys miss. Big play threat, 10 rushing touchdowns of 50-plus yards. Drops are an issue, and they were an issue at South Dakota State for this past year against just 22 catches. I think he's a bit more like build-up straight-line speed than big-time explosion, which is probably fine. My, my question mark is, is he Elijah Mitchell? I think it's a good player comparison. Or on the downside, is he Darrington Evans? Fourth round, you could have a sleeper on your hands there. All right, y'all, so we're talking about cornerbacks how many corners get drafted in round one? Usually, and I, I try to diagnose each position by my top players, I could see four cornerbacks going in round one. I would probably set it, I'd probably set the over-under at four and a half, though that seems high, maybe three and a half, because I see Stingley, I see Sauce, and I see Trent McDuffie all going in round one. And then after that, it does get a little bit interesting. So let's say three and a half. That would be the over-under. Let me know how many corners get drafted in the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft.